Hello, hello, beautiful soul. I am super excited about today's guest and you will see very shortly why. Before we even connected with Ryan and I was just browsing, well, let's call it stalking, her work a little bit online, I felt so much resonance and so much deep appreciation for her deep work that she is doing with the humanity, with women, you know, and their relationships. It's so needed, so beautiful. And I feel so honored to have you here today, Ryan. Oh, what a beautiful introduction. Thank you so much for having me. It feels like it's my honor to do. Absolutely. So before we, you know, move into the recording, my listeners, they know that I love playing a little game before we dive deep into, you know, our talk. And uh, that is a little small visual meditation, if you're open to it. I know you love giving it and that's something you're teaching, but I think that it's really nice when you can relax and just receive it yourself too for a moment. Yes. Beautiful. So if you're open to it, just uh, gently close your eyes. And as you're closing your eyes and slowing your breath into this beautiful present moment in here and now, because there is nowhere else to be, nothing else to do, you start feeling your face relaxing, your shoulders relaxing. Your body feels heavier and you're slowly reconnecting with this present moment, with your breath, dropping into your body. And as you're slowly dropping into your body, feeling grounded, feeling safe, I would love for you to visualize beautiful, crisp morning walk in New Zealand. You're on a beautiful walk in a time when everything is blooming. The grass is green and you are walking in a beautiful meadow. Butterflies are flying, dragonflies, and you're feeling so happy to be alive, so vibrant and invigorated. And as you're walking there and touching the beautiful wild flowers blooming, you see a group of little girls running around and playing with the flowers and doing their crowns. And one of them runs to you and brings you a beautiful flower crown. She gives it to your hand, looks at you and smiles and says, who are you? What is the one thing you would tell this little girl? What is the one thing you would love for her to know about you? Not what do you do, but who you really are. What would be your answer to her? And you can share the answer with us if it's not a secret. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what came to mind and it brought tears to my eyes is I am that I am. Mm, that is so beautiful. And I know your surroundings are now blooming and so beautiful. And you're like, leave me here. But I would love to slowly bring you back to us and slowly noticing your room, your environment, your body feeling energized and invigorated and You're more than ever aligned with your purpose and your truth, ready to share with the audience, ready to be back into this present moment with us. (laughs) You made me a little teary. It was just so pure. Welcome back. Yeah, many of my, uh, you know, um, guests, they don't want to even come back. They're just like sitting there. I was like, let's do the interview. (laughs) I'm sure people tell you this, but your voice has like an ASMR quality to it. Because I was feeling a lot of tingles through my system. And I've heard lots of guided meditation, but it's interesting how your voice, maybe it's the accent, it's the cadence. Wow. It's the um, depth of resonance in it, but it really is powerful. And 
I was right there. I mean, I really felt like an experience. And I'm not just saying that. That really is potent. So I thank feel you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I never heard it this way, really. That's something that now I'm curious and now I will have to do my research. I don't know if you know about human design, but I'm one five. So the one has to research everything. Oh, so I will be on it later today. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And it's it's fascinating. And I receive it because, you know, there were times, Ryan, when I wouldn't record videos, I wouldn't record, you know, um, anything because of my accent, because people couldn't understand me in a past. And then I learned them along my journey that my people will understand and my people want to understand and I'm perfectly made for my people. And that's something that takes time and learning. And I feel like it's fascinating. And I'm sure that, you know, as a life coach and, you know, relationship expert, you see it very often. The things that could be easy, just being ourselves are usually the hardest one, right? Yes. And I think, oh my God, I cringe at the relationship expert because it's like, who is expert in that? It's like constantly evolving. Relationships are constantly evolving and the, you know, our definitions of uh, compatibility and um, expansion within relationship, that line keeps moving as we evolve. So I don't know that I would call myself that, but I I love to work with people around relationships and um, I think they hold all the keys, many keys to mm-hmm. ourselves and our relationship to self being, we talked about that a little bit before yeah. everything begins with a relationship to self and mm-hmm. we're not primed to value that. It really is about relationship to others or relationship to everything else around us. And so it's only when you bottom out and you're seasoned on the path of self inquiry that you start to understand the depth to which you can allow love in and have a connection depends on the depth with which you've mined within your own self, first and foremost. Absolutely. Like you said, it all starts with the relationship with self, because I feel like we are so programmed to be in relationship with everybody else, our environment, our close people, you know, or maybe even God or religions, whatever was brought to us when we were, you know, growing up. But we are really never thought to have a relationship with self. So how do you learn that? How do you start? And how do you even realize that that's something that you need? Well, I think after enough self-betrayals and enough abandonment of your own self in our in the form of people-pleasing and codependence and trying to morph ourselves into what everyone around us, if we get super malleable, We can do that for a time and then there comes a time if you've done that repetitively throughout your life there's a disconnect and who am i who am i actually without wanting love chasing this and you know in the spiritual community we do a lot of seeking we even call it that and it's like i'm a seeker i'm seeking and it wasn't until last year that i worked with a teacher and one of the first things he was saying was stop seeking Mm -hmm. and you know he actually encouraged me to stop meditating, stop reading spiritual books, stop chanting, stop using my bowls and my tuning forks and all my accoutrement to just really drop into presence throughout my day without all these other things. And I loved that because I think there's an addiction, an addictive piece to that, where somehow, somewhere, the spiritual aspect of me will come into being over there when I get to that place when I'm in a neutral mind, when I'm, you know, not triggered, when I feel Zen all the time. And it's just one more place where we can shame ourselves and not be enough right now, right here where we are. And so that was a a real powerful transition for me. And it's really drops you into the relationship to yourself. Again, you know, relationship to something greater being over there. Somehow when I align to that, then I'll be okay. Then I'll have all the answers. And when you really get that everything is perfect as it is right now, and we know these tenets, we hear them all the time, and um, just moving into that experience of it and putting value on who I am in this moment is enough. And my, my relationship to God, source, all that is, is right where it needs to be. And um, I can receive the information that I need to once I clear away that noise, because that's just one other sheath of noise and distraction of with dropping into presence. 
Mm, that is so beautiful. And I resonate with it so much because I feel that I was living my life like that for, you know, three decades, like living in a wenland. When I achieve this, when I have that, when I get there, it was always when, when, when. And then you get these achievements, then you do these things and you are like, I thought I would feel different. I thought it it would be different. So it's it's beautiful when you can just put everything on the side and just truly drop into this present moment within yourself and realize that having all these things, it's really nice, right? Like I do them, I have them, but we don't need them. Yes. We don't need them. And when we can detach from that need, that's when everything else is possible. That's, that's right. when you create. And then the secret is then we get to enjoy them mm-hmm. because they're not enjoying us. And it's coming from a place of contentment, a place of you know anchoring into you. And these are just things we fold in. It's like my teacher saying, take all of that away. And then I then when I have an experience of who I am without all those bells and whistles, without the smoke and mirrors, without the love and light show, you know, yes. then I can, then I can fold them in and they've just become accessories. You know, they're not ways in to connection to source. They're just expressions, mm-hmm. you know, that's a subtle difference. Um, so, I mean, I wish you could see the rest of my room because I have all these sound bowls and like I, I'm like obsessed because I see the huge amethyst there and I see the uh, goddesses there and I'm that's that's something that we are you know like manifesting for our next home because we'll be traveling now for six months with my husband but the huge amethyst and the goddesses you know and statues it's so beautiful it is it is it's just rem- they're just reminders to me you know they're reminders and they I spent a lot of time in India, so I'm going to have a, I have a connection with all those gods and goddesses, those aspects of God. God's, it's so unknowable, right? So I love that about Hinduism where they have facets of the divine, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but ultimately you're praying to yourself. You're praying to your higher self. You're praying to all that is, right? So it's not in those forms, mm-hmm. just expressions of them. So it's, it's the, those little adjustments that we can make on the path. But that's really freeing, you know, it's, it's really yeah. freeing when you realize that, that I don't need something outside of me, that I can just have me and still create that peace and fulfillment. And one thing you mentioned, you know, you know, like to, to connect to it, like a higher self, what, what does that mean to you? Like the highest self? Oh, it just means there's a part of me that is a fractal of the divine. You know, I am, that's there. And then on top of that comes ancestry, personality, subconscious, ego, like inner child, like all those shadow self, there's all these other parts and they all have a role and they all have their place and none of them should be vilified, right? They're all, they're all useful because without the ego, I'd just be a blob of consciousness, you know, and the inner child, and she's so dear to me. But if I don't um, give her a space to have a place to speak her truth, then she'll wreak havoc in my life and throw tantrums and behave like my, my, they're not toddlers anymore, but they sometimes (laughs) act like toddlers, you know, my seven year old and whatnot. So it's, it's really just knowing who's in play. And that's a seasoned person on the path. Who's ooh, who's talking right now with the subconscious? It's, you know, launching its programming again mm-hmm. and noticing these phrases that I that we go to. Oh, that's in play. Interesting, curious. So it's 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 looking at all these aspects and parts of us. So we know that the higher self is kind of a pop out from that. And I know what it feels like because it feels like um, love. It feels like purity. It feels like. Um, the Godhead, if you will, that we all have access to, but I have to peel away all these other things. I have to, with love and with um, awareness to be able to drop into that set point within myself. And we each have that. And so I'll have people come through my practice that have a, a fraught relationship with the divine or source or all that is, whatever you want to call it, God, but they can, they can open to this idea of a higher self. Because who, just like you can fall in love with your inner child and be like, oh, honey, you know, on the other side of that, there's, you know, you can also start to be led by this part of you that knows everything, 
that has access to your Akashic records, who knows past lives and who knows future outcomes. And so that's who I want to be uh, connected to. That's who I would like to be dictating what comes next. That's who I would like to be checking in with. How do you feel about this? What? And then I start to shorten that um, the distance between the egoic self, all those other aspects of me and having a direct line with the higher self, which again is connected to source and all that is. So it feels, it feels really uh, practical and very tangible. And like I said before, you know, God is the idea notion of God so vast and unknowable for us here on this plane in 3D that um, sometimes it can be overwhelming. So to be able to try to make a connection with the higher self with as much love and devotion and see if that part of you can start um, giving you more awareness in your life and open you up to new avenues, new possibilities. And it's, it's, it's a worthy conversation. That is so beautiful. And you know, like the first thing that came to my heart, it's how do we do that? Like, how do we do that if we are still doing our work and we are still working with, you know, our inner child and overriding those self-limiting beliefs, working with our subconscious and our shadows, if we're still like sitting in it, how can we connect with the higher self? Well, I think lots of ways through practicing stillness, through noticing how the mind wants to engage, knowing, you know, there's a great, you know, tenet in India called neti neti. And it's, they say sometimes the fastest way of knowing who you are is knowing who you're not. I'm not this and I'm not that. So if you know, it's not the inner child talking, it's not, you know, the personality, it's not the ego, it's not the subconscious, then what's there? What's, what's left? And so that's sort of a, an idea of just pe peeling away all those layers and prayer, meditation, um, stillness, quiet between thoughts, like all the things that you've been talking about on your page and in your life and how you work with people too. It's, it's all of those things that can give us that opening. And then from there, it's starting to feel, I think, in resonance with it. Oh, that, there, there, there it is. I feel that feeling. And then asking questions. And, you know, I write, I am a big believer in writing things out. So sometimes if I have a trigger around something, I'll write it out as me. I'm doing this in air quotes. Many was just listening to this. And then I'll write all the, my grievances. And then sometimes I'll put my pen in the other hand and I'll have my inner child write with my non-dominant hand what her thoughts are. What do you feel? And then I'll get the, the gist of what's actually going on in that moment. So I can do the same thing with my higher self. How do you see this? Or I'll fold up a paper with those grievances and I'll put them on a sacred space for me, which is my, I have my own altar and I'll put it there and I'll just sit with it. And then I'll go into meditation and I'll ask, what could be another way to see this? What would you have me know? You know so it's knowing what questions to ask. What was, what is the higher view of this? What is the purpose of this? How can I align to the highest good of all? And that's always the best question because the ego is not going to be able to answer that. The mm. ego is like, I want this. You know, the subconscious is do what you always do. The child is like, I want my way, you know? And so everyone's got their own voice and you start to know what those voices are. And we don't have multiple personalities or it's not that, but again, they're, act, they're, they're, um, they're aspects of us. And when they're not checked, they wreak havoc. So I think it's just knowing that. That is beautiful and super valuable to really even recognizing how other aspects of us are acting and how they would have us to think or what they would have us to do because that's what we have done up until now right yeah. so doing it differently and I love that you take your non-dominant hand and you know like journal and write because it seems like strange right like doing something uncomfortable and it looks different and it starts to feel different and we give ourselves more freedom to just channel whatever it's coming through us so that's a beautiful practice and um what are some of your daily practices that help you because i don't know if people are looking at youtube or just listening to us on a podcast but you are so radiant and you have such a beautiful calm energy about you what helps you to stay in this state 
I think like we've done, we've created a set point. I'm going to say we, because I know you've done the same work and I'm sure many listening have done that. There's a set point that feels, I don't go off of it too much. I know what it feels like when stress and anxiety, it's just, I don't live there. It's just not a place I'm comfortable anymore. But again, that has not always been the case. You know, 18 years ago, I was in recovery for addiction. So that is the frequency of self-loathing. So this has been a lot, this has been many years of patience and exploration and curiosity and compassion to move into this place here. It doesn't just happen. So keep at it. I know I'm a huge proponent for hypnosis. I think it's so super, super powerful. And I've done a lot of different modalities in my life, but that particular, I've gone to people that have been able to close loops for me on thought processes, on um, lack of self-love, on um, just having a set point of drama, if you will. And I've been able to close those loops that that is no longer resonant with who I am. So I attribute a lot to that. And also just grace. I mean, I, I know it's the corny thing to say, but it's really true. I've shown up, but I'm, my higher self, grace, however you want to see it, has um, continued to uplevel me as I've moved. What I do on a daily basis is some days more and some days less. I've I become really flexible with it. It's how it feels. And it's all the things we're told to do, you know, we're, we're suggested to do. But I love, you know, I love doing the bowls and I love my crystals and I love talking to myself kindly. And I love, you know, being with my children, laughing and, you know, all those all those things that really we hear people say, but that's where it is. I moved out of city life 10 years ago. I think that also was an up-level moment for me because it was a leap of faith. You know, I didn't know what it would feel like to live on a farm. I'd always been living in Europe or living in Los Angeles or New York or somewhere fabulous. And I didn't know how I would do in nature. And it really created, it helped with that set point that we're talking about. I didn't need as much noise, as, stim, as much stimulation to be able to uh, feel purpose. Mm. And it's interesting when you close those uh, leaks, if you will, because that's what it felt like. I was constantly seeking like a heat seeking missile for stimulus. Yeah. I was able to drop into um, that place within me and be able to be self directed from there. And from there, I started working with others and, you know, becoming a hypnotherapist and life coach and all those things. I've been working with people since my recovery. So it's been almost 18 years, but mm -hmm. this next phase of service to others kind of opened. But the, thank you for those beautiful things you said. And yes, I, absolutely. It's it's something yeah. that you just can make up, you know, like it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you say, your energy, it's always the loudest thing that will speak for you, whether we like it or not. So I, I love that you really had that leap of faith and, and trust that, that it will work out for you. And that you went back to the, I want to say basics, because I feel like nature, it's where we belong. And when you are in city and always around stimulus it's hard for you to even be with yourself because we are so used to be with you know like disrupted all the time that you forget how it even feels and then you reset when you go to nature right so if you live there it's it's so beautiful so yeah, yeah. yeah. and the and the whole world is wanting us to be externally focused i mean billions of dollars are made on that, you know, desire for us to be thinking there's something outside of us that will give us what we're seeking, right? So I think it's, you know, knowing that I don't think nature is the solution for everybody, but I think it is, it's knowing when you feel that call that it's definitely a call to heed or investigate and you will find your way beyond that listening to yourself and really trusting because there are people who love and thrive right in in different environment that's why we can be living in different environment and be different so it's it's beautiful listening to your intuition and really what is calling you what are you curious about so ryan one last question it's for the one who is listening right now who feels disconnected from herself and the world who is still seeking, <laughs> what is the one thing you would love for her to know? To know that she is right where she needs to be. Nothing needs to change outside of her. 
that everything is here for her and just start calling in more grace when she goes to sleep, when she wakes up to have an expectation that she will be held, that she is, you know, these are things that I say when my clients are in hypnosis, that you are the beloved daughter of the universe mm -hmm. in whom it is so well pleased. And so just keep feeling that love for you and keep seeing how it shows up in your life, you know, and that, and that's a big thing. I think something so important right now, Hetia, is shielding. And we don't talk enough about that. When we're on this spiritual path, we're constantly talking about opening up, open up, open up all your chakras, open up your whole being to light, to light. And I want to say that I think that it's also irresponsible because we have to, if we're going to open, we have to shield because there's a lot of fear out there. There's a lot of different energies. This planet has been in the grips of light and dark for a very long time. And there's been a shift that's happening, but there's some grasping and those that are carrying light and codes and are here to uplevel the planet, which I'm certain those that are listening are a part of this movement then please, my friend, please, and I have goosebumps saying it, please shield yourself. It makes me emotional because it's so important. Put those shields around all your chakras and not in fear, but just in a claiming. You will not, I do not consent to your infringement on my sovereignty. I do not consent. I say this every day throughout my day. And I surround myself with different um, alchemical symbols like Metatron's cube and, you know, Michael and, the seed of life i have it as a tattoo and the all of all of those different symbols you can look into them and place them on your chakras imagine bubbles of light around you before you go into the supermarkets put your put fire around you that's god's fire around you to just shield off anything that is not in the highest good and i think that's probably one of my more most important um, messages right now because i think there's a lot of interference that's being run and if each of us can anchor into our sovereignty in this way, this uh, ascension can really move forward. I'm so thankful that it came through you. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing it. Because like you said, we are being told, like, put your walls down, open up, open up. And putting down the walls to be able to connect with others, it's necessary but then also protect yourself, protect your energy, you know, especially when you're opening up. And I love that you gave us some practical tips and ways how to shield ourselves and look even deeper into that. Because like you said, it doesn't come from place of fear, like, oh, I have to hide and, and protect yeah. myself. It's coming from place of sovereignty and love and grace and, and respect for oneself, right? Like you would protect your child, that's you right. would protect your child and then you're not protecting yourself and not shielding yourself, then we get to have some self-love talk. <laughs> That's right. That's absolutely right. Well that said. is so beautiful. So Ryan, I am so thankful. It was such a beautiful talk. I know that I personally was stalking you on your Instagram, but do you have any other favorite places that you would love to connect with others that are listening right now? No, Instagram is my place where I write all my thoughts and feelings and teachings and anything that comes through that inspires me. So I love to meet you there and I love to make connections with you. So I'll see you there. And then I have my website, which talks a little bit more about how I work. And if anyone feels the call, I'm here in our brave new world. <laughs> <laughs> brave new world here we are here we go ryan thank you so much for not only today but also for your work that you are doing for past couple of decades it's needed the world it's ready and it's so beautiful so thank you so much thank you Patricia. such a pleasure thank you everyone for listening and thank you <laughs>